on the songs page. This is where you're going to see all the songs in your entire library. And the first thing you're probably going to want to do is set up some song integrations. Because when you start a Planning Center account, there are no songs in it. You have to tell us what songs you want to do. But if you use some popular services, I'm going to click Song File Integrations here, and you'll see which those are. If you use either Multitracks, Praise Charts, or Song Select, we have integrations with those companies so that if you want to do a song and they have files for it, it will just automatically bring those songs, song files over. So you would want to come in here and these would say enable, um, but now I've already actually put my name and password in for all three of these services, so that's why they say enabled. I've already hooked it up. You would want to come here and just connect your Planning Center account with any of these services so that adding songs is a snap. Okay, we're going to go into the song that we created earlier, Who You Say I Am. So let's actually add a little search here, a text filter, Who You Say, and hit enter. There it is. Let's go to Who You Say I Am. And we have got this Hillsong Worship version of this. This is the first arrangement of this song. You can have multiple arrangements of songs and keep the files separate with them. So let's actually add a new arrangement of this. So I'm going to click the Add button under Arrangements. And I'm going to, you know what? It, the one I want to do is not even recorded. It's just like I want to do an acoustic kind of stripped down version of this. So I'm just going to type acoustic and I'm going to click this green Create It. it doesn't, it's not an arrangement that exists. I'm making my own here. I'm going to do this in the key of D and I am um, going to import the lyrics from Song Select, and now I'm going to click Submit. So it makes a new arrangement, the acoustic arrangement. You'll see my both arrangements are tabs over here to the left, and it has made that. Now, I already have created my own chord chart, and I recorded a little demo of this acoustic version, and I want my people to be able to get to it. So. I already have those files. I can just drag those files right onto the screen. So let's go over to my desktop here. Here are those files. I'll select them, and then I'm just going to drag them um, either onto the arrangement or the key. I'm going to say these, these are both in the key of D, so I'm going to click and put them in the key of D. So you see it uploads those files pretty quickly, and now both of those files are uploaded and available anytime I do this acoustic arrangement in the key of D. What if I want to do it in C? Oh, is that asking too much? Another key? Yes, it is possible. So we can put audio and chord charts both in any key. So I'm going to hover, hover over this audio file, and I'm going to click the transpose icon here. It has a little plus and minus next to the note. And I'm going to transpose it from D, which is what it's in right now, to C. Planning Center knows it should go down because that's closer. And I'm just going to hit transpose. First of all, it makes a new key of C for me. Up here, it tells me it is preparing the transposition of that. Oh, it's already transposing it now. And usually within about a minute or so, that song is going to be transposed and it's going to pop up into the key of C. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does it sound like? Well, uh, those files are at the same tempo, but the vocals are going to sound a little bit weird. Um if you go low, and a little bit like chipmunks if you go high, um, but it's still at the same tempo and you can still rehearse it along. You just might have, you know, um, James Earl Jones, Mufasa sings worship, which is kind of a cool vibe if you ask me. So um, these are still great for people to rehearse to, and if you're not transposing it very far from D to C, you're barely going to notice the difference. And now your team members can actually play or sing along in the key that you're going to be doing it in. So. Transpose those files whenever you can. We can also transpose chord charts. What? Now, PDF files are more like a, a picture of a file. We can't transpose a picture. But if you put your chord charts in as text, we can figure out what the chords are and we can transpose them. So let's actually click right here next to Lyrics and Chords. Not next to, let's click on the button that says Lyrics and Chords. And this is going to take you into our Chord Chart Editor. Over here on the left is where I can type. 
and over here on the right is a preview of what the chord chart's gonna look like. So right now I just have the lyrics in there. If I wanted to put some chords in, first I'm gonna say, I'm gonna type this in in the key of D. So I'm gonna say, who I am at the highest king, um, um, G, D over F sharp, and then uh, G again, uh, D again, sorry. So uh, those might not be the right chords. I'm just making this up on the spot. But these chords are now figured out and they're put in bold over here um, and will be transposable to any key. Let me show you that. Right now, we are viewing this in the original key, so it's not that impressive. You're like, oh, it shows you what you type. How innovative this software program is. Okay, just wait. What if I click another button? So if I click up here from original key, and let's say, let's view this in E flat. Boom, instantly it figures out what those chords were and it put them in E flat. Okay, now you're impressed at least just a little bit. I can see you through the screen. It's kind of embarrassing. Um, okay, but you can also put chords in between words and uh, but what if I wanted to do that here and I wanted to have like an E minor 7 here? There's not really much room for it. Well, there's another way to put chords in and that is called Chord Pro. So on the second line, I'll say D inside of square brackets. I was lost, but he brought in O oh, his. Let's see. G uh, love D over F sharp. And then let's even put an E minor 7 in there because we are living on the edge, baby. Uh, and then we'll get a D there at the end. Oops. Um, so these chords we've written in line with the lyrics, but our chord chart editor has put them above and even adds space where the lyrics need space in order for the chords to have room there. So this is Chord Pro. And now that I have this, I wrote this in the key of D, but when I go back to my arrangement, there's going to be a version of this in the key of C as well. Now, a couple of the things you can do here with keys. I've got these two keys now, but I can't really tell them apart. Which one is the main one? Well, I'm going to go to D, and I'm going to click the pencil, and I'm going to add a description. And I'm going to say original. That's the original one. And then I'm going to go into C, and I'm going to say, well, this is Aaron's key. This is the one that I especially like. Aaron's key, enter, and you can put whatever you want there to make it easier when you're choosing this song to try to remember which, which key does so-and-so like to do it in or which is the one that I like. You can add key descriptions there. Now, the other thing that's nice is this was transposed to C. If I edit this key of C, and let's just do something weird, and let's just say there's also um, uh, a capo. There's a capo one in B, and let's add another capo, three in A. We added those there. We automatically have three chord charts now on this. The original one in C and those two different capo chord charts. If I click on that, you're going to see this chord chart that I made. It's going to say that it's capo three, and it's going to have the chords in that particular key for your acoustic guitar player or anybody else who likes capo versions to play.